found these awesome chairs by the curbside of my neighborhood when I was walking the dog. Or maybe I was walking the kids. I can't remember. So under the cover of darkness, I took these chairs back into my workshop. Um, and so for the past few weeks, I've been thinking, what can I do with these awesome chairs? I could reupholster them because the cushions are super gross. Um, but I have no experience doing that and I really have no interest. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the legs uh, for the base of a coffee table. I'm going to build the apron from scratch and the tabletop from scratch. And it's going to be great. You're going to love it. My wife has been making fun of me over the past few weeks, calling me a trash picker, and every time it's trash day, she's like, hey, you're going to go out and find some new garbage? Um, and so I told her, you know, this isn't the first time I found beauty in things other people are willing to throw out. Um, and last night I slept on the couch. But it was a moral victory uh, for me. And I got to watch Netflix. Okay. Let's get started. In order to make our tabletop today, we're going to need to cut five pieces of this one by six down at 46 and three quarters each. That means we're going to need three one by six by eights. I'll be using pipe clamps today to join my tabletop. I'm adjusting the clamps to accommodate the five boards we're about to join. I need a little bit of wiggle room, that way I can turn them on their side and start gluing them on. When you're laying out a tabletop like this, it's critical that you take into account wood movement. You need to orient the grain of each piece of wood in the opposite direction of the board next to it. What I realized is if I can't figure out which way the wood grain is going, I look at the side of the board and it usually gives me a better indication. Turn the first four boards on their sides and then liberally apply glue to each end. Then turn them all over and uh, we're going to push them together. Grab some scrap 1x6s and we're going to use them to put some downward pressure on the top of the joints. Because I don't have a planer, the thickness of these boards aren't all consistent. So we're going to do our best to get them as flush as possible and then sand the hell out of them. I'd like to introduce you to Thor's hammer. Well, it's like an early prototype, but it's going to help us tap this into place. Grab four clamps and we're going to put two on each side on top of the scrap wood. And this is going to eliminate any bone that can happen after we tighten our pipe clamps. If you don't have extra clamps, you can use anything. Use paint buckets. I would even use my daughters if they learn how to sit still for a while. Generally, I would recommend you don't mark out where you want things to go and then sand. But I'm an idiot. Now we have everything prefabbed and ready to be painted. We have two 38 and a quarter pieces and two 18 inch pieces for our apron. And we have four legs we took from our neighbor's front yard. Before we get going on the apron, I'm going to get the stain going on the tabletop. I'm using Minwax's special walnut stain. Uh, normally I use a rag and I actually prefer that method to the foam brush or paintbrush. I feel like you can pull more stain off of the wood with a rag, uh, whereas you're sort of limited to what you can take off after you brush it on with a brush. I'd rather go on the lighter side in the first coat and then if I want to go back and make it darker, whereas once it's dark, it's dark. We're going to use those marks as an indicator of where to pre-drill for our pocket screws. Set your Craig jig to accommodate three quarter inch material and then get to it. I'm using Valspar's chalky finish paint, and this stuff's expensive, man. Um, I used to make my own chalk paint, not to be confused with chalkboard paint. Chalk paint, I'm not sure what this has in it, but the stuff I was making was from calcium carbonate powder, 
water and acrylic craft paint. And the benefit to this is that it gives it a nice, almost milky, chalky finish over top of existing finishes. So it's a perfect application for covering these uh, reused legs I'm using along with the apron I'm building. This stuff goes on really nicely. It gives you a nice, smooth, even finish. I always sand in between coats. I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch paint dry. Uh, painting is literally the worst thing ever. Well, bowling kind of sucks too. That's why they sell beer at bowling alleys, right? I'm laying out each piece of the apron that we just prefabbed, and I'm going to secure it with an inch and a quarter pocket screws. So now that the apron's all set, we're gonna cut some three and three quarter mitered pieces to attach the legs to the apron. Set your miter saw to 45 degrees and make the first cut. Then measure out three and three quarter inches and that's where we're going to set the blade and make our second cut. I went over. But, Looks like it might work. Using your first piece as a guide, mark out where you need to make your next cut and do it. Right here. Measure the center of each mitered piece, which was about two inches. Then I'm going to pre drill two bigger holes to accommodate the bolts that go into the legs. By using washers like this, you can actually make the holes a little bit bigger uh, to give you some wiggle room if they're not going right into the holes on the legs. Then I'm gonna take my Craig drill bit and drill at a 45 degree angle, four holes, two on each side, to attach the mitered piece to our apron. And then I secure the mitered pieces to the apron using one inch screws. Finally attach the legs. We did it. 